Good morning, sir and madam. Today is a wonderful time to learn about Paulo Freire, a Brazilian educator and philosopher of education, a person whose book Pedagogy of the Oppressed is one of the most quoted books in education in so far. Paulo Freire is one of the pillars of critical pedagogy, a view on education that descends from neo-Marxist critical theory school. Critical theory emerged from the Frankfurt neo-Marxist environment and has a lot of its peculiarities. The foundational fathers were Horkheimer, Walter Benjamin and Jürgen Habermas. One of their focuses was on critical consciousness, a notion that will be so and so frequently used by Paulo Freire himself. Marxists and neo-Marxists have their own view and education where all processes are seen through the lenses of the oppressor and the oppressed. Logically, the oppressed were the students and the oppressors were the teachers and the administration that signified that society and people in power in general. Marxists generally saw the education system as one that should keep inequality intact, teach students that this system is absolutely natural. The byproduct of the system was minimum knowledge and discipline for workers to work at factories of the elite itself. Old education system to their mind was just to keep the myth of meritocracy, the idea that achievements of a student are a product of the mind of a student only. In fact, everything was dependent on money and the opportunity of every student was very and very different, though publicly claimed in a different way. The book that united the majority of Paulo Freire's views on education and society became a famous work, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. This book is enormously quoted as it was a new look on the relationship between teacher, student and society in post-colonial countries that just set free in that period of time. The most important notion of this work is the Portuguese term conscientizaco, or in English, critical consciousness. What's that? It's a state of mind that allows a person to perceive and expose the social and political contradictions in their environment and to take action against the oppressive elements in their life. Conscientizaco is also a way to see in the world differently than one's stereotypes and beliefs. If we check the definition of the widely used concept of critical thinking, we will be surprised. Critical thinking scholar Peter Fasione gave such a definition to it. Purposeful, self-regulatory judgment which results in interpretation, analysis, evaluation and inference, as well as explanation of the evidential, conceptual, methodological and so on considerations upon which the judgment is based. We see that the definition of conscientizaco is very similar to one of critical thinking, with the only difference that Freire saw the ability to think by yourself as the liberation tool, and above mentioned Peter Fasione saw it more technically, thinking about thinking theory, not a philosophy of education. Conscientizaco conscious and independent judgment contrasted and immensely contradicted the old system of education, which Paulo Freire called banking system of education. The main metaphor is that a student is like a bucket in which he receives the information, say, water. So the teacher is just putting the information in the bucket. The bucket has no agency to decide the volume of water, the liquid itself, the fact that the water is actually poured into it and so on. And of course no questions are possible even if it is connected to the material of the lesson. The metaphor describes the fact that the education system was overly passive. Moreover, students received information forcefully. To sum up, the education process resembled the oppression system in a society. Paulo Freire looks at school or a school class as a model of a society in whole, and probably rightfully so. Here we've got a nice picture that greatly describes the banking system of education. The same liquid of the same color is poured into the brain of the person and the person cannot see the world in the original way anymore. The education system, as Freire puts it, led to the dehumanization of large masses. I quote. Although the situation of oppression is a dehumanized and dehumanizing totality affecting both 
the oppressors and those whom they oppress. It is the latter who must wage for both the struggle for fuller humanity. The oppressor, who is himself dehumanized because he dehumanizes others, is unable to lead this struggle. Uh, what is the main message here? Well, it is very Marxist in the core. The oppressed need to liberate themselves and that a human-like environment can be achieved only if the oppressed do their work on it. A bit strange thought, as for now, but this class thinking prevailed in the majority of the 20th century. The oppressors, claims Freire, cannot act dialogically because if they do so, there is a message that they are weak. Generally, Freire pays a lot of attention to the dialogue and the need for it. Dialogue is in general crucial for the critical theory school as it gives hope for the horizontal relationship at school and in society as a whole, and Freire gives attention to it as well. Quote, Founding itself upon love, humility and faith, dialogue becomes a horizontal relationship which mutual trust between the participants is the logical consequence. Conversely, such trust is obviously absent in the anti-dialogics of the banking method of education. So here comes the question. Are there some real teaching technologies that use the ideas of Paulo Freire? Actually, we can find some, as Freire was working with the philosophy of education not the teaching techniques as such. For instance, problem-solving model of education encourages a lot of things that are advertised and discussed by Freire. First of all, the relationship between the students and the teacher are horizontal. The teacher might have more power as the social engineer in some way, but the communication is very different from that in the usual non-communicative class. Dialogue is present too. The students find their boundaries inside of small groups of a communicative class and those boundaries require constant negotiation and dialogue with other colleagues, teachers and even the administration. Such a communicative class blurs the line between people as everyone learns alongside each other, creating equality and the lack of oppression. As for now, that's all. Thank you all and see you in a while for other videos in our short history of education episodes.